Parents, has this happened to you? You've made an agreement with your child and then as the situation is playing out, <laughs> the complete opposite thing of what you agreed upon happens. Oh, <laughs> I think this one's really common. And um, I think, well, really common for parents who are into gentle parenting, connected parenting. Um, and I think it's representative of more so the power dynamic than anything else. So, you know, we live in a culture where as parents, we have a lot of power in comparison to our children. And that makes agreements and collaboration a bit of a challenge. And there are three scenarios um, that I see play out around this topic of making agreements. Um, so if we're trying to understand why has this happened, the first one is, you know, is your child making the agreement, is your child agreeing to this because they wish to please you or avoid discomfort coming from you? <laughs> so if your child, you know, if you make a request and your child agrees because they love you, they want, yes, they want to make you happy. They want to agree to what you have to say. Isn't that sweet? Um, or perhaps um, they're saying yes, more so for the sake of ease. They want to maybe avoid a punishment, like maybe you'll get angry. Um, or perhaps, uh, perhaps they, you're not going to get angry, um, but maybe you'll react in a way that brings them a lot of discomfort. And so they're saying yes, but it's not really a full yes. They're saying yes um, because they, they want to feel <laughs> that feeling on the other side of making you happy, pleasing you. Um, another scenario that I have seen play out is when you made the request of your child and they said yes, were they actually capable of doing what they agreed to do? Um, I'm thinking of my own example as a teacher, um, you know, that was a while ago, right now I'm an unschooling mom <laughs> and parent coach. Um, and I'm thinking about one of my favorite students and asking him, you know, could he please sit through the story today? And then when the story's done, I'll make sure that he has an outlet for his energy. And he and I had like such a, like I loved him. <laughs> and of course he agreed. He, you know, he, he would have loved to have been able to sit through the story and there was no way he could do it. And so my ask of him was just beyond what he could do. And as parents, I actually think sometimes it's helpful to ask our kids to stretch themselves a little bit, challenge them to, you know, develop a skill that they're working on or, you know, whatever, you know, that stretch isn't always a bad thing. But for us as parents, we have to recognize when we're asking our, our kids to stretch and recognize, oh, you know what, I, that was an agreement that we made, but that stretch was too much for them. Um, and then the third one, and I'm hoping that I can explain this one well, the third one is you made an agreement with your child and within that agreement process, you asked something of them and they are, um, they're saying yes because they would like to say yes, but their needs weren't represented in uh, in the agreement process. And so they're saying yes, and they're holding your needs, but they're also trying to meet their needs. So they're actually almost trying to do that collaborative process within them. And we want to create space so that the collaborative process is happening 
between the two of you while you're making the agreement. I hope I explained that one correctly. So yes, they do want to hold your needs. They also want to hold their needs as being important and valuable, but they can't figure, you know, the strategy that they use to try to do that really didn't work out. Um, so yeah, those are the three sort of main headings that I have witnessed, experienced, <laughs> um, and I'm hoping that it's useful for you. And as you think about that power dynamic um, with you having more power than your child, all of the little things that you do outside of that agreement making process contributes to the power dynamic that you have within the negotiation of the agreement. So if you've created this environment where your child can think critically about the world and have their own opinions and, you know, question, question the fairness of something or question what you say, um, all of that leading into an agreement helps to even out that uh, power differential. And within that agreement making process, you as a parent really slowing down and taking time to understand their perspective and what their needs might be and honoring those needs and your own as you uh, negotiate you know the strategy that would that you both want to work towards so yeah this was this was a big one um, and it's a lot of information to squeeze into like a seven minute video. <laughs> so um, if this is the kind of thing that you find yourself working on and you would like more support in navigating this and trying to, to have more of a collaborative process when making agreements with your children, I invite you to check out my Connected Parenting course. Um, it's one of my favorite courses to engage in. I learn a lot right along with all of you. So yeah, please check it out. And if you have any questions, send me a DM. And if you have a parenting dilemma that you would love to see me um, try, to, uh, try to navigate with my experience in gentle parenting, attachment parenting, nonviolent communication, self-directed philosophy, uh, please send me a DM because I love hearing from you. Okay, bye.